Hello, Scotty from Discord Puppets, and I thought I would do a um, a video showing how we put together our animations uh, because we've done so many now over the last uh, few years using uh, character animator, Discord Puppets. We put together quite a good workflow for churning out things um, quickly. Um, I don't know the extent of your um, knowledge on character animator so I'm just going to make a video giving lots of tips and tricks and anything you already know feel free to ignore and skip on um, right well first of all before I get into that I'm just going to show you the general motion capture feel to the puppet when I turn on the webcam I calibrate it uh, one of the things I've done because it's sitting on a branch I wanted to give it some bounce now we can, con I can control this. So at the moment, it's um, you know, it's popping up and down quite a bit. But if I find the body settings, as you see, so body and branch, and head position strength is on 100. So let's turn that down to 50. Yeah, that's a bit more subtle. Keep it at that. Obviously, this character doesn't actually, you know, like most characters, I've got a head and whatnot. With the pigeon, it's almost like one head and body is all connected. So I've got a bit of a turn connected to the body. The actual um, texture here is on a mask. So you can, if, um, I've basically done it just to give it, uh, even though the character is frontal built, when you turn your head this way and that way it gives the impression that he's actually turning his face so you know for example if you were talking to an audience um, using the character and there was someone off stage around here you can actually have him you know really looking around and picking out people or even if he's doing a skit talking about people walking down beneath him you can have him like looking down and he's talking about you know people that he's looking at so that's the general motion capture. I've added a bit of um, of dangle on his head there. And I've got his eyebrows set at this kind of permanent grumpy look. Uh, you might decide to go in a different angle. You might want him to be a grumpy pigeon. And if that's the case, that's no problem. One of the first controls I'll show you is here. Um, that's an eyebrow for normal. If you click on that, it'll move the eyebrows up to a more... It still looks a bit miserable. The default mouth I've got him on at the moment is grumpy, but I have got other ones which I'll show you. Um, I'll get onto that in a bit. First of all, I'm just going to show you some of the props I've made for him. Um, newspaper. So I've got him here. So if you're doing anything about you know the news, um, not only have I got him so you can have him looking at the newspaper, all this is editable. So I can put text in there. I can show you how to do it. It's dead simple, actually. You just um, click on the character in the project, press this PS thing, it will open it up in Photoshop, and then in Photoshop, all you got to do is in this news um, folder, just overlay any images, text, title, and then you press save, and it'll update to the newspaper there. That's that. Um, glasses, you can turn on. Have them on, you can have them off. At the moment, I've got the glasses set fixed to the newspaper, but I can certainly take them off if you wanted them off for any reason. Um, this is his tail, just like you know, there's a shirt on somebody. If you look down here, you'll see when I press this one, he does like a little poopy trigger. <laughs> Pigeons, is what they're known for, so that's what I've done. I've added a hat. Um, again, like the newspaper, it's editable. You can change the colour and you could add text onto it. The hat isn't probably needs a bit more work because really I need to get that hat moving, parallaxing. At the moment, it looks like it's just sat there. So maybe give that a miss for a moment. Right, let's have a look through some expressions and then I'll get onto how all the mouths work. So I've created a whole bunch of eyelids, eyebrows, mouths. Um, I put a bunch of them together as presets with pre made. Um, so we got kind of confused, 
Oh, I'm gonna have to turn that one off there. So yeah, we got kind of confused, happy, very happy, unhappy, pissed off, angry, scared, kind of surprised. Unhappy again, a kind of miffy, kind of piffy, kind of hmm, snooty look. That's more of a sad look. That's a more like eco bloody hell look. That's a more of a kind of unimpressed look, you know. That's another kind of like bewildered, shocked, surprised look. Happy, smiling, huh? You know, like, what the bloody hell are you talking about? That's a kind of deadpan, you know, he's kind of can't take, you know, believe whatever's going on. That's just another angry look. That's another smiley look. That's a kind of cheesy grin. That's more of an evil grin. And that's just another kind of... I've, the premise of the character, obviously, is that he's grumpy. So I've got quite a few... It is kind of, in my head, I always imagine him kind of a bit like, I don't know, Noel Gallagher. Um, you know, that kind of um, constant, he's like witty, funny, but, you know, he's got a bit of a constant downer on the world. What we find when we're animating, um, especially with presenting type characters like this, is that even though all them full face expressions are great, most of the time the character's talking so you don't actually see the mouth and it's the eyebrows and the eyelids where all the expressions come from so i've added a bunch of those so that's just like a blink and what i would recommend it depends how you pull it together but if you was doing it live all these things you can um if you go to layout and then you you know select whichever one and then you press the keyboard button and press perform. Right, so now when I press C, the testing test, well, I haven't got the mouth, um, the lip sync turns on yet, but you can use the keyboard and trigger off. It's almost like playing a musical instrument. We've done lots of live shows now, and you very quickly learn where all the keys are on the keyboard for happy, sad, mad. So while you're talking away, you can trigger off all them expressions to really bring the character to life. Um, as well as I mean, also here you can control each of the things I've shown you just on their own. So you can just trigger the eyebrows, you can just trigger the mouths and the eyelids. Um, that's good if you're actually animating in a timeline, gives you greater control over what you get your character to do. Um, also, as well as all the facial expressions, I've given them lots of body gestures. So we've got like the loadable gesture basically just all different kind of hand gestures you know when he's talking pointing quickly as a scroll through these the only one i haven't gotten here i don't think is him covering his face but i'll add that in in fact i'll show you how i do it in case you want to do and you think yourself like so this controls i'm just going to pull it out and pull it onto my second monitor for a second and i'm going to drag the hands in fact i'm going to just turn this off for a moment because i just want it i'm going to record an action and i just want it to record the arm action i don't want anything else going on there and let's do him covering his face. Or covering his eyes almost. You know, like you can't believe what's going on. Right, then I'm going to go, once I've dragged him into place, I'm going to go to timeline, record two frames. And then I'm going to extend that out by about 10 frames. And the beginning, I'm going to one, two, three. And the end, one, two, three, maybe four, just to give it a bit more of a slower out going right click create replay and then over here in the replay section you see it's popped up i'm going to rename that to cover face and then when i press play i'm 
and as long as I hold my finger down on that, uh, they'll stay in place, and then when I let go, they'll go back down. Right, so I've shown you the expressions, I've shown you the movements, I've shown you the arm gestures. Last of all is the mouth. Now, I've set the mouth, the mouths up like um, a Muppet mouth, you know, like Kermit the Frog, just open and closing. And this is linked to the layer picker behavior. And so the mouths are going to open and close um, depending on the volume of my voice. So I turn this on. Turn on. So the default mouth, oops, sorry. The default mouth is this kind of unhappy beaky mouth. So testing, testing, a one, two, three, testing, testing, a one, two, three. Again, um, you can find the settings over here. Um, LP default grumpy that's what's on there now and the audio sensitivity 500 if you were to turn it down testing testing one two three you see that you know i'm gonna have to talk really loud it's a lot more subtle um i found that the 500 was a kind of sweet spot and you can control it more by i mean there now it's looking a bit over the top uh, let me just kind of back this testing testing one two three maybe bring it down 350 testing testing one two three yeah that might be a bit better um but that's how you do it it's as simple as that just move the audio settings up and down obviously you got a different microphone you got a different office um and you might bring it around to different environments so those settings would have to be tweaked to suit right anyway so that is the default mouth but i've got four other um mouths as well so we've got shouty mouth so if he's getting really angry he, you know, he's got a more wide open mouth and he's really getting annoyed about something. This one is if he's mad and he's proper shouting and he's like really telling somebody off. But, like I said, you might not want him to be an angry bird. So, let's try a normal happy mouth. So, this is just like a default mouth, but obviously a more happy um, tone to it. And obviously that, you know, changes everything. Testing, testing, you know, one, two, three, testing, testing, one, two, three. And then the last one is happy. So it's similar to small, but it's even wider. Now, as you can see there, that one looks a bit over the top. So I'm going to go down, happy. And I'm going to change that to 300. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Mind you, so now if you're using this one, you want it for shouting anyway. Um, but yeah, the default is this. But, you know, you can pick whatever suits um, the mood of the thing. And if you're using it live, Again, you can set, um, select one of those, and then you know, you could have that one as one, two, three, four. And if I find the swap set over here on the left hand side of the screen, so we look for mouths. And oh no, they're all on latch anyway. So you know, if you got a grumpy character, but then maybe let's say if he's talking about something and you know he's just gonna shit on someone's head, and that's making him really happy, you just press the number three, and then it cuts over to that. Or number four, he's like really finding hilarious and laughing, ha ha ha, you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, and then if you press it again, it'll go back to default. Well, one of the first things um, we'll get into, well, I'll do it a bit at a time. First of all, setting up a new scene. And to do that, what you're going to do is click on your puppet and select this little movie slate icon. And then when you click on it, if you look over to the right hand side, you can set the dimension. Now, if you're doing something like TikTok, you'll probably want this um, squared size thing. But if you're doing something for YouTube, you'll probably want the traditional um, 1080 by 1920. So let's just put that in there. And that pigeon looking, maybe, is he looking like his middle? I think he might be over to the right a tad bit too much. So position X, that's going to control the left and right. I'm just going to bring it over a smidgen. Right. Um, first of all, audio. Now, there's two ways of doing this. You can literally just record your audio in real time, or you can pre-record your audio wherever you might record it, and then bring it in. 
Um, when you're recording anything, these red dots here on the right hand side means recording. So, you know, if you're just wanting to record the audio, you don't want everything turned on. So we're going to press, if you press, keep your finger down on control and press one of the dots, it'll turn them all off. Press your finger down on control and press one of the dots, it'll turn them all on, um, back on. So we're just going to want lip sync if you're doing it in real time. And importantly, um, all these LP ones. In fact, they're the most important because that's how this puppet is set up. And that means record them all so that if you swap between the mouths later on using the timeline, um, you know, they'll all be recorded in time to your live vocal. Um, if you've got a vocal already that you've made, let's import it. So I'm going to find one I've made earlier. And then you're going to drag that. So that's going to appear in your project and you're going to drag it down into your timeline. Then you're going to select the audio file, select the puppet file. You're going to go to timeline and you're going to go lip sync from scene audio um it's not the same with this one we want it to be from layer picker and i notice i haven't got the audio turned on here so go down on each of these and make sure audio input is selected and then go back to timeline and you go compute five takes from scene audio and basically that is going to lip sync to all of these different layer picker mouths that i've got set up which i mentioned in my previous video so you got your default then you got his um, shouty mouth his mad mouth his smiley mouth or his happy mouth so we're going to go timeline and cut between those Now we don't need the lip sync one because this character hasn't got lips set up. It's all off the layer picker. I'll turn that off. Zoom in a little bit. Now at the moment, it's um, you're just seeing this mouth. But if I was to press, um, let's see, hang on. where is? Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, um, this is what I need to get into, is, well, basically that first thing there shows you how to automatically lip sync and setting up the layer picker, which gets into our next point, which is setting up swap sets. Now, this is really one of the most important things for being able to animate fast. So I've got a swap set for expressions, for lids and eyebrows, for eyebrows, for mouths, and for eyelids on their own. So what we're going to do, just set the scene up. I'm going to press record, and I'm just going to press one of each of these, and you'll see why in a second. Oh, I'm going to press stop. And now what you're going to see turned up here is a bunch of bars in the timeline. Ah, oh, shit, no, it didn't. Oh, hang on. This is another, through my mistake there, important lesson. New Adobe uh, character animators got this thing set up called Smart Replays. In theory, it's supposed to work quite good, but I wouldn't recommend it. So when you set up a new scene, make sure that it's switched stuff. If you have a problem where it's not showing up, it's because that is being left on. Right, so again, let's go back. Let's press record, and I'm going to click on each of these trigger buttons from each swap set. So left hand, right hand, eyelids, mouths, eyebrows, eyebrows and eyelids combined, expressions, and those are the layer picker mouths I got set up. Right, and then I'm going to press stop. Now, 
No, it's just playing. Oh no, I know exactly. <laughs> I know exactly why it's playing up. I'm not thinking straight because I'm rushing into things here. Yeah. Right. Another mistake I made there, and again, you can learn through my mistakes. I didn't turn on the bloody trigger button. So, whatever you want to record, you gotta make sure it's activated. So, one more time. They say you learn through your mistakes, hopefully you'll learn through mine. Right, so record. Press stop. Now we see all the bloody bars. Sorry about this, but it is an important um, thing that we've discovered that really does speed up our um, work pro process. But what I'm doing here is literally just deleting all the things that I've just triggered. So you can either grab it there and just wipe it away, or you can right click and press delete. Then um, let's. I'm going to click on the scene and let's say this scene is going to be just a minute long. I'm now going to select all of these and stretch them out for the length of the minute. And I'm going to delete that, delete that, and I'm going to delete that. Right, now. Basically, the reason that we do this is that now everything that is in your swap sets, you can literally um, just go along in your timeline, right click wherever you want and just drop in what you want. So, for example, if at this point he says something which makes him angry, you could just go to expressions and you could right click, put eek and for however long you stretch that out, you'll have that expression. Because this is the way that we animate, we do it in layers. We'll go in, we'll sort out, we'll um, do the lip sync first, then we will turn on the camera and we'll press control um, and on there so that everything is activated, except for the eye gaze, make sure the camera input is never on because that looks terrible. Golden rule, never ever have um, camera input on eye guys because the eyes just blow all around and it's the most amateur looking thing that you can do um, and I'll come back to the eye guys in a bit but yeah make sure that's off so then um, the reason that we do the audio first is actually often we will do the animation not only just listening to the audio but looking at the here on the time frames you can see the difference cadence of um, sentences and whatnot so you know we'll sway in time to that you know they work as good markers for where you can be moving around so yeah and then it's just a case of layering um, all the different things like I said if he's talking you can't have this expression because it will override everything. So that's where you want the mouth to be just going as normal. Um, and then you want to go for the eyes and brow triggers and just drop in, you know, like him looking cross at this point. Don't forget to occasionally drop in a blink in between sentences. And then he might be happier at this point. Then drop in a blink. And then he might end on a really, you know, grumpy expression. And if we go back and we press play. One second. So I'll just pause it for a second then. Those, I've got two dogs. They don't make a sound all day. They sleep most of the time, except for whenever I'm recording anything. The second I'm recording anything, they start barking. Right. Anyway, 
with that lip sync there, that's obviously um, for, you know, pre-loaded thing. If you want to just do the lip sync in real time, all you got to do, make sure you click on your puppet there. Control, turn everything off. Make sure you've got the ones recording that you want to use, which will be all your LP ones. So make sure they're all selected. And then just press record. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, um, I went into about messing around with the sensitivity. I've got them set up at 350 because that suits my office and my microphone. Yours environment and equipment will be different, so you might want to play around with that. And as for the mouth here, um, you can see there is, oh, sorry, um, yeah, so you just need to pick, so the default mouth is, you know, is a bit miserable looking, but if you want him to switch up to his happy mouth, just right click in mouth, find the LP for happy, and then stretch that out for however long you want him to be happy for. And then let's go back and press play. And you can see now the mouth is swapped over to the happy mouth. Um, let's just check. Yep, just double checking something there. Yeah, so you... Um, Record, you know, import your vocal and whatnot, and then in the mouth trigger one, you uh, select whichever loud picker mouth you want. So happy, mad, shouty, and then as you'll see when you press play, it'll swap over. See mad, and then shouty. Of course, if you didn't in real time, you don't have to worry about that. Because the other way to do it is to, as you know, on um. The previous video I showed you how I set up the mouths one two three four so you know if you do it in real time it'll do it for you so if I press record now so this is in one mouth then I press one and this is in uh, another mouth then I press two and this is in another three oh bloody hell yet again I forget to press the um, Press the um, trigger button. So, sorry, press record. So, I press number one and that cha um, changes it to shouty. Number two, mad. Number three, happy. And number four, actually, I think four is happy and number three is smiley. So, now if I press stop there, you'll see that it will drop in another bar for mouth. And you'll see every time I press the number, that way it's showing up on there. And this done. So you might want to do it that way. And then for any reason, when you go back and you think, oh, I didn't want him to be angry looking at that point. I pressed the wrong button. I press happy instead of sad. No problem. Just right click and change to whatever you want. And if you want to like make that last longer, you can drag that along. And that's that. So yeah, basically we animate in layers. Um, and we start with the audio and then we build up on top of that audio, then the general motion, then we drop in all the expressions and pretty soon that is it. The last thing that you need to add in is um, some movement. And the movements are dead simple. What we're gonna do, oh, move that over a bit. I'm gonna scroll down to where it says replace. Now, oftentimes, I find just the double gestures or do, just kind of single hand there, there, there. And if you're, you know, your character's pointing to someone and whatnot, you got them all here. So what you gotta do, the quickest and easiest way of doing this is to click on it, select which one you want. I mean, you can do it live. You can um, press record again, just make sure you got them bloody triggers 
um, selected. But at the same time, make sure you don't have all the mo. If you've got everything recorded, for example, and you just want to record the arms and you've got everything turned on, it's going to wipe out what you've done before. It's going to overlay it. So that's where you need to just make sure you're just recording what you want recording. And in, in this instance, it's just the triggers. Right, so I'm going to select that and then, sorry, you press record. And you can just press them as you want. Now, the reason that I don't do it this way, and you'll see they come up. And the reason I don't do it this way is that it comes down to timing. When you do it um, that way, you know, oftentimes you're reacting. So if you just hear um, when you're playing back and you hear this is where he's laughing and then you throw the arms up, you're hearing the laugh and then you're throwing the arms up. Where what you want is the arms to go up, you know, at the same time, if not a little bit before. Um, because when you're gesturing, when you're about to make a point, you know, you make a point at the same time. You don't make a point and then start pointing after you finish talking. So for that reason, the way I prefer to do it is to uh, select whichever one I want, go to edit, go to copy, select your pigeon, select the point you want it. So let's say, look, he's mad there. And let's say I want him to throw his arms out wide, copy, and then just paste it. And there you go. Now, when it pastes, it's going to just be the short um, way that it was recorded. So all you do is that you drag it out for however long you want them arms to be thrown up for. And sometimes you might want the arms to go up faster, you know, if he's really angry and he's just like throwing his arms out like that. And all you got to do there is select on the end these little boxes. Those are your blends in and out. And then just shorten it. His arms will go out quicker. Or if he's making a slow point like that, um, you can stretch it out. And you have got things like ease in and out. Um, basically, you've got ease in, ease out, and ease in and out. Ease in and out is kind of the most fluid motion. Um, ease in, so that'll be like quick out and then ease into the end of the motion or out will be slow out and into the motion so it's opposed to the other one which is <laughs> you'll get it like i say it's one of them things you just play around with it most of the time ease in and out will be perfectly fine especially since he's got these little stubby wings it can get a bit more complicated when you've got a human character just got bending elbows and hands and whatnot but for him he's basically got wings so ease in and out you be fine um, there so yeah and all you want to do is go along and when I do it I just go along and I just drop them in and then I'll go back and listen and then that's when I just like tidy it up and make sure I've got you know like for here we can see that he's just about to say something so I just time it to start just about there and then end just after he finishes talking as an example another little tip instead of you know um having to you know press control and select all the different layers you want sometimes if you go to timeline and go link recording selection then it will select everything that was selected when you did the recording now that's in, um, important in case you do a pose and what i mean by that is that even though you've done your motion capture at one point, you might want him to go like that, you know, like really emphasize something or throw his arms up. And you didn't do it when you live recorded it. So what you do here is make sure everything is turned on. Make sure your camera's on. And then you got your dragger. So I'm going, let's say for this particular part, I want him to like throw his arms up. So I'm going to put one arm up like that. And then I'm going to lean right towards the camera because he's really making a point. And then I'm going to go to scene. Um, no, I'm going to go to timeline, sorry, and press record two frame take, or you can just press control and number two. And now you see all these blue bars appear. And then you stretch it out again for however long you want it to appear. And these bars here 
the blends again. Normally I would say about four frames, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's just a guideline, you know, it might be less, it might be more. Um, on the timeline, you can zoom, you know, if it's out like that, it's going to be hard to see how many bars it is. So zoom right in and you can count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then when you press play, now that more, to me, that looks a little bit quick. So let's make it a bit slower. Yeah, virtual camera. And you can see them over here. I've set up um, basically the keys along the bottom of your keyboard. So um, if you press C and hold your finger down on it, it cuts through a head and shoulders. Hold your finger down on X and that's a headshot. C is an extreme headshot. Now these are cold cut camera. Often good for, you know, more dramatic emphasis on things. However, I've also got zoom set up. So if we go to the other side of these keys, so we've got um, M, N and B. So if I press M, you'll see that it zooms in instead of being a cold cut. And then N. Um, yeah, that one's not working proper. I'll have to fix that one anyway so just make sure if you're using that in real time you need both pigeon and the virtual camera selected so press control make sure you got them both on and that just means that on the keyboard I can still use that virtual camera in real time doesn't matter so much if you're animating on the timeline again it's just if you're performing live so if you're performing live you might want that kind of zoom cut when you're making a point for that slow zoom in again as i said in the previous video it's like playing a musical instrument it's just you know getting yourself familiar with the different options available um i think that is everything. i really just wanted to show you you know some of the ways that we put together our workflow um i don't know if i did it in the most succinct way you know a bit stumbly hopefully i made my point it really is just the swap sets the swap sets in the timeline are what um save a lot of time you know literally audio head motion Drop in your expressions using the swap sets with the right click. Add in your arm movements and that's it. And if you want it to look a bit more snazzier, use the virtual camera. Um, again, in the exact same way that the um, arm things work, you can select that. Go to edit, copy, and then just press edit, paste. And you just need to just like the arm movement stretch out however long you want it to last for and you can also add in your own blends however long you know you might want it to be a really long cutting um and that's it i think like i said in regards to doing it you know in real time you can either assign the keys to the keyboard. You could assign them um, to the controls and put it up on a second monitor. I know a lot of like YouTubers use stuff like this. Personally, I wouldn't. Um, it's up to you. You know, if, that, if you want to invest in that, you can do. But you know, it's just 
the keyboard will do the same thing. Um, even if you have to buy another keyboard, you can normally buy one for like a fiver off of YouTube and it'll do the exact same job. Um, and then, yeah, that's the very last thing I say. So let's say you've got your animation made and um, I've updated the pigeon for you. So all you got to do so you don't lose everything, you go to import, you go to import, you find the puppet file that I've sent you, and then you go import it in. So you select your timeline one, you select the one you want to replace it with, make sure they're both selected, and then you right click on here, and then you go replace with select the puppet in the project panel. And that is now changed to the one up there. I'm going to press undo because I don't want that old one on. But that's how you do it. Um, important thing to know because I'm sure I'll be updating the puppet quite often. And you're not going to want to have to redo an animation. You just do that and it'll just you know replace the base model. Um, and that's it I think. I will. The last thing I'll do um, is I'm going to get the scene set up with all the swap sets ready. And then all I would recommend from there is that whenever you do a new animation, just select on it here um, and go to edit, duplicate. So you've always got that blank template one. Press enter, rename it, you know, animation two. And another good thing, um, this is something my brother particularly enjoys doing when we're animating stuff. He'll duplicate a scene and then instead of, you know, layering in, all the expressions in the arm movements, he will he will use all those that are already in the scene and just move them around to suit whatnot. I prefer doing it from scratch and just going along and dropping them in, but it's whatever suits suits you. Anyway, half hour long video. I hope some of that was um, helpful. Um, yeah, that's it.